Hey, it's Jared. I have five tips that are going to help you get the most out of Notion. You know, when I discovered Notion, I had seen a video and discovered the application and thought this is going to change my life. Installing this application, maybe utilizing a few templates uh, that achieve the things that I want to achieve. This is going to be life changing. And it quickly became aware to me that that wasn't going to be the case, that these templates, while interesting and a great way to get started, were not going to achieve all of my goals. And so I started modifying them and trying to better understand Notion. And that's led to plenty of templates that I put out there, as well as many other videos on this channel and even my personal YouTube channel. So five tips for getting the most out of Notion. Whether you are new to Notion or you've been using Notion for a while and find yourself in a slump or find yourself stuck, I think some of these tips here are going to help you better get in the motion of using an app like this to integrate into your life. So the first one is to walk before you run. It's very easy to install Notion, throw some templates in there and think that it's going to change your life or even use one of these elaborate Notion systems that people have created that are really cool, but a lot to take on all at once. So I highly recommend that you learn how Notion works before you try to implement too many of these things. Templates are great because they help you understand how to utilize a Notion for a specific topic, but these big platforms that people create that go into Notion that can you know manage everything, that, that can be a lot. It can be a lot to try and figure out a piece of software that is not really designed to be easy to use for big things like that. It's easy to get started and it's easy to try some new things from the ground level uh, within Notion, but it's really hard to jump in with these big platforms or these big elaborate templates that people have created. So learn how Notion works. You can do that here on this channel through some of the videos that I've put out. I also have a Notion course that you could check out as well if you want something a little bit more structured. But start small and scale up over time. Nothing really works out that well when you try to implement big change. Start small, learn and understand and implement things in a scalable way into your life and then build up over time. Notion is not going to be this fix that's going to fix everything all at once. You're going to have to start small, implement those things into your life, and then scale up and add in other areas as you move forward and get more used to utilizing a tool like this. Number two is, let's talk about templates. So on using templates, don't get carried away. It's easy to go into the template list and look at everything that's awesome. And then you go on YouTube and watch some videos and you see some templates that other people have created, such as myself, and you install those. And now you've got templates that may or may not do some of the same things. And you've created kind of a mess. It's easy to get carried away installing templates into Notion. And then you have a mess. And just like having a messy desk, which I often have, it leads to inefficiencies and you get frustrated and you just don't want to deal with it. And so use templates as inspiration to create a system that works for you. When you're getting started within Notion, try something small that you can implement and that you can work at every day for a little while before you start adding in other things. So find templates to use as inspiration as well. Don't just install a template and think that it's going to achieve everything that you want it to achieve. If you install a template from so-and-so and and another one from so-and-so other person, and you know, you've hodgepodge together this system, it's probably not designed to work together. You really need to understand Notion and how you can connect things and make them work together in order to use some of these templates and bring them together. Once you have too many templates that operate separately from each other, that's when things really start to get mundane and you're doing multiple tasks the same time just to make sure that you have one thing checked off in one area because you mentioned it in another area and it just kind of becomes a mess and it's not time saving or effective anymore. So if you're not sure what system will work for you, I recommend just going back to number one and understanding Notion, learning how it works, starting small and scaling up from there. Because even some of these big elaborate systems that people create, which are really cool, and I like, I love looking at them and kind of nerding out on them, they are created specifically for that person and what they were trying to achieve. 
and only will it work for you if you are exactly the same as that person. And some of these frameworks that people have created that are cool are a lot and they're kind of hard to just jump right into. So if you're not sure what system will work for you, you're not going to be able to create a system until you get into Notion and just get started and start working at it uh, and understanding how Notion works. Implementing some big system is probably going to frustrate you. And so I recommend avoiding that altogether until you have a better understanding of how it works. Number three is understanding relational databases. This is where the breakdown happens when people install lots of templates and then can't get things to talk to each other because there's no relations between the data. Uh, you enter data on one thing and, and you want to connect it to something else, you end up having to input it in two different places. And so understanding how relational databases works gives you the power in connecting your information between two different places. Um, you need to identify core areas uh, really and build from there. So for example, if I am wanting to build a task manager, I can of course have a task manager and it's just a simple maybe to-do list or something like that where I can manage tasks, but then I have, might have client projects and some of those tasks are part of client projects. And so if I'm in a task, I, I can see my tasks, but if I'm in a client project, I wanna see all the tasks that were related to that project. So I have to connect that data somehow. And even then I have client projects and I have clients, and I may have multiple projects for a client, and, or that maybe even span across different clients. And so I wanna be able to go to a client and look at all the projects, and then also look at all the tasks that are associated to that client as well, because there might even be tasks that were not part of a specific project. And so, you know, this is getting kind of deep, but there's really no way to do any of that without understanding how relational databases work. And so what I highly recommend is that you figure out the base level area that is going to be the, the, the deepest area that you can go into when it comes to um, wanting to sort your information. So for example, I just gave the tasks, client projects, and clients. Like, does anything go deeper than clients? Well, I guess it could if I had multiple, if I have multiple businesses, you know, what business is it part of? What client is it? So I could go pretty deep. But for me, when it comes to client work or work that I typically do on a day-to-day, -day, it, it doesn't go any deeper than clients. And so clients is the base level. And then projects, tasks, and then there's some other elements that are in there as well. And so when I set up my relational databases, I make sure that there is a base level, like where do I want to, if I want to get a bird's eye view of all of the information, where do I go for that? and that would be to the client. I wanna see everything that I'm working on for a client, the tasks, the projects, expenses, anything else that's client related, I wanna see at the client level. In the same way we would if we were looking in our invoicing software or a CRM or something like that. So in, in understanding relational databases, you need to identify a core area. One last example, if you were building um, something for your household, then it would probably be the people within your household would be the base level. And then from there, it's tasks and other areas um, that you, know, you may want to keep track of or manage within Notion. So always look at the deepest level and start there and then build outward, utilizing relational databases so that you can connect databases together. Connect the client database to the projects database, connect the project database to the tasks database, so forth and so on. I've got more videos on this topic and I go into it in deep detail and show you how to build stuff like this in my Notion course. So number four is to schedule cleanup sessions. Even when you have everything well thought out, you're still gonna end up with stuff that is a mess or that you need to get rid of or you need to reorganize or, or, or at least clean up. And so I schedule cleanup sessions once a month. I'll go into Notion and there's some tasks sometimes that didn't get done or that were no longer relevant or that I may have just forgotten to check off. Maybe there was a project that was kind of stagnant and I hadn't been in that project all month. And so I'm going to go into that project and I'm going to check in on it 
And uh, if it's archived, if I'm no longer working on it, or if it's now on hold, I'll change its status and kind of get it out of my way so that I'm not staring at it all the time. I also go into my inbox, which is kind of my dumpster for everything. Any ideas, thoughts, things that are I want to jot down go into the inbox. And the inbox, uh, I need to sort and I need to put that information where it belongs. And sometimes I, I just need this cleanup session in order to go in and do that. If I don't have these cleanup sessions, then things become overwhelming. I get too much going on in Notion and it becomes something that allows me to procrastinate because I don't want to deal with it. And I want to avoid procrastination so I make sure to go in and have these cleanup sessions. The fifth thing is to automate as much as you can. Notion can become a time suck. It can take a lot of time to manage the different things that you built in Notion. And so I automate everything that I can, and it's made it much easier to do that with automate.io or Zapier. And so, of course, Notion just bought automate.io, and so there's a lot of integrations and stuff there. For example... With task management, it's easier for me to use Todoist for task management because I can go and add tasks using natural language input, which is much faster for me. And I like checking things off in uh, Todoist. And then I can utilize automate.io to connect Todoist to Notion so that when I put tasks in that are business specific or household specific or for one of my own projects, that those tasks go into the appropriate place, it automatically creates a record in Notion for me and even applies the appropriate page template. There's a lot of cool things that I can do there with tasks and automation. Calendar sync, I also sync my calendar to Notion because if you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen perhaps the video on my interactions calendar and my interactions calendar pulls from my Google Calendar. And so my Google Calendar, when I put in something new into the Google Calendar, it needs to go into my Interactions Calendar. Google Calendar is still a better option for our phones and reminders and everything like that. And of course, uh, invites, calendar invites and all that stuff. Notion doesn't really work too well for that. I need a way to pull that data in without having to do it manually. So with that automation, I can automatically pull it in to Notion and have that record created automatically. I archive emails to Notion sometimes. Uh, the old process of doing this was copying the information out of the email, pasting it into Notion. But with utilizing the Spark email app, which gives me a URL that goes directly to my email, I can send that URL easily over to a Notion note for reference and tag that to a client very easily. Super easy and automated. I also use Notion for email marketing, which might be interesting if you know anything about email marketing. When I go in and add a new client to my client's database, that also adds them to ConvertKit, which I use for email marketing. And so when I add a client, it adds them to ConvertKit and it also gets them started on a short sequence that gives them some information and tells them a little bit more about what to expect uh, now that they're a client. And so that process is super easy. Just put them in Notion and it automatically triggers an email campaign, which is awesome. And then they're appropriately tagged in ConvertKit so that if I send out any more emails, it'll automatically go to that person or the, that group of people, my clients. Uh, so very cool that I can automate that. There really is endless possibilities for automation using automate.io or Zapier. I feel like automate.io is going to have a lot more coming to it because Notion bought the company. And so because of that, there's going to be tighter integration and a lot more things that you can do. Um, and automate.io, I've been really finding interesting. And so if you want to give it a try, check out the link down in the description below for automate.io. Uh, you'll get a free trial there. And I'll also be making more videos on these specific automations and how I use Notion with the rest of my workflow and my day-to-day -day life. So before you go, I've got some additional resources I wanted to share with you. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when I put out new videos. I've got a long list of videos that I'm working on and that I'm going to be putting out here soon, as well as other productivity tips and tools uh, and sharing a little bit more of my workflow and automation um, with all of you here on this channel. 
channel. So make sure to click that subscribe button. Check out my Notion course. It's linked down below. It's inexpensive and it's a great way to understand how to use Notion by building something from start to finish. Instead of installing templates, learn how to build something uh, from start to finish so that you better understand Notion at its core. Um, I've got a lot of upcoming content for this channel as I just talked about. I'm really passionate about building tools for myself that get things done, which is why I share a lot of them with you guys online. And so I've got a lot of new content coming up soon. And then you can check out my personal channel, which some of you may have even originated from. Uh, my personal channel is going to be more of kind of following along with me as I build and work on my businesses and achieve personal goals. And so if you're interested in that, and of course, Notion is heavily involved in that process process, make sure to check out my personal channel that is linked down below as well. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much for being here and I hope to see you back soon on another video or in my Notion course. Take care.